Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for AppSheet Office Hours focused on how to use and optimize expressions. My name is Lauren, and I am the content manager on the Google Cloud community team. And joining us today, we have several members from the AppSheet team who will take us through an introduction to expressions, as well as a demonstration walkthrough of common use cases and examples. Um, questions are encouraged, so please feel free to add those into the YouTube chat box throughout the session, and we'll make sure to get to them. And uh, yeah, if you, if you can, let us know where you're joining us from. I see many of you are already doing that. It's great to see you from Chicago, Holland, Bolivia. Uh, thank you all for joining us. And uh, last thing just to mention before we kick off the presentation is that uh, we will be posting the recording and um, a recap of this session in the AppSheet community following the event. So you can check that out afterward um, at any time. And that link to the community is in the first link in the description um, on the YouTube event. So with that, I will hand it over to you, Sandy, to take us through starting with an introduction to expressions. Great, thanks, Lauren. Uh, yeah, my name is Sandy Jones. I'm a, a actually a workspace customer engineer here, here at Google. I'm a kind of a recent AppSheet convert. So I think like a lot of you, I've kind of gone through that that uh, introduction and learning, and um, it, it's really amazing what I've been able to do very quickly with with AppSheet. So. Um, and at a certain point, of course, you have to kind of cross this threshold into this world we're in now, expressions. So, um, you know, I think like most of you, probably when you heard that there was expressions, you may have thought a little bit like the next slide here uh, as to what is the, are these things doing in this no-code environment? Uh, I think I personally had like PTSD to a time I used a product called Visual Java, and it was this tool way back that you could like visually draw an application, and then you'd actually go in and write all the code. So it wasn't actually writing any code for you, and what it was doing was making a pretty big mess, and you had to go and then work that out yourself through code. But this is very, very different than that. So um, you know, actually, if we go one more slide, what we're really talking about here is the same skill set that power users of spreadsheets use to make those a functional tool for their business, right? We're just talking formulas, um, you know, expressions that get you the date or format some some strings and things like that. Not really writing code. I'm not writing, you know, creating classes. I'm not doing uh, complex looping and conditional statements, although I can do those things. It's more just that one point in time where I just need to evaluate something different or format something a little bit different to make my application flow smoothly. I'm gonna talk about all those different pieces as we go. We can maybe move forward, but like I would do actually before we go to one slide, I, I forgot. I wanted to kind of explain this. I think this is important in getting non app sheet users to understand what you know, kind of what this is great for, and it's for uplifting those spreadsheets into an application. So really, that target audience for AppSheet are those power users in spreadsheets that are very comfortable writing a formula or or evaluating a, a statement. Now we can go forward. Sorry about that one. So I like to think of expression logic as kind of crossing over a big swath of the different pieces of AppSheet. Um, you'll be using them inside of the data set to actually bridge data pieces together. I may want to access information uh, from one data object or data source into another. I can use expressions to grab that or even manipulate that a little bit. Think of when I have a first name and a last name field, I might want to concatenate that into a full name, for example. In my UX, they can be powerful in terms of creating business logic to show or not show a screen or a field on a screen and that sort of thing. So it can actually create UX display logic. And then, of course, in actions, you know, when I'm trying to automate things as a result of, of something happening in the app, I'm going to have expressions that tell me how to follow that path. And, and really, it's these three pieces that go together, the three layers of your application that go together to build that app. So. So really expression logic is everywhere. And in fact, uh, if we go to the next slide, you, you can always find it by that little flask. If you look in the, the uh, uh, bar there where it's right next to the word true, that little kind of beaker or flask is what tells you you're able to, to write expressions. So you'll see them in the, the data section, you'll see them in the UX section and in behaviors and that sort of thing. Um, and where that flask is, you can actually click in and expand into some of the views you're seeing below. And there's two main areas I want to address. One is the data explorer and the other is the expression ex assistant. So let's start with the data explorer first. Um, really what that allows you to do is look at your, your data model and traverse through to find out exactly how to map to different fields. It's really just helping you to quickly understand the, the syntax you need to use to get a value within the application. And I think that's really a, 
a significant strength of AppSheet is I'm always able to kind of behind the scenes navigate around that that data model and get at the data I need. There's some concepts like references and dereferences. We'll talk to you a little bit later that make that all possible, but that's really a powerful element of this tool. The other part, the expression ass assistant, is just a way of helping you kind of get off the ground with what is available. Um, instead of having to go to another uh, website or somewhere and look at, at uh, documentation, you can sift right through here and see the different types of expressions and actually get some examples and insert them right in using that uh, little tool. So just kind of saving time, but mostly giving you a, a library of all the different things that are possible, uh, whether they be simple math functions or creating deep links to that application or another application. Let's go uh, one more slide. So if you think of all the expressions and kind of break them down into categories, uh, we've kind of come up with the most common groupings that, that we've seen anyway. Uh, First of all, just straight up values. These are column values. So the columns in your various data elements, I'm able to address them directly. The square brackets allow me to do that. That's one type of expression, just referencing a value somewhere else in my application. Uh, text, I mentioned the sort of the, the common use of text expression and one that actually AppSheet does for you. If you have a first name and last name column in your data, it'll automatically concatenate together both of those to create a full name column. And they'll do that automatically. You don't have to do uh, explicitly do that, although you obviously could. But there's other functions there that you can use to manipulate a string, like len, if I want to trim off part of it, or uh, you know, want to grab a, a, a substring out of that string. There's a lot of things I can do to kind of manipulate that, and even use that in further logic that I, I might do down the road, like conditional statements. Of course, there's got to be math uh, functions, uh, averaging out something or summing up things. Uh, you know, any of the data in there that's a new number value, I can run mathematical uh, equations against. Boolean values or yes, no's are, are in there, just a true or false, anything that kind of results in true or false. And, and you can just use an equal sign or the uh, angled brackets for a not equals uh, in any sort of expression you're writing. We have date and time functions, and it's another one that, uh, you know, sometimes apps you will add automatically, the now or today functions in there if you're creating new values maybe you want to you know initiate that value as today's date you can just put in that expression today with some brackets uh, as well there's functions or expressions for manipulating sets of data like lists so i can actually pull a select statement out or write a kind of simple select statement against a list of values in google i find this one or in app sheet sorry i find this one incredibly powerful for sort of like I said, reaching in within the application and just pulling a value out that maybe there wasn't a direct reference to. Uh, so I can use that as kind of a way of selecting a value out of any list that I have. Um, we're gonna go deeper into that one uh, a little bit later because that can be a valuable one for getting you out of corners when you're maybe stuck uh, with some of the, the applications you're building. Uh, conditional logic, probably familiar if you've written sort of any code at all, it's just your, your if statement. It just allows you to evaluate something again to a true or false. Uh, and then take a, 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 a path accordingly based on that. So just allows me to set up a condition that checks against my formula and then does something based on that or has a result based on that. I mentioned the reference and, and dereference. And, and the idea here is I'm able to, when, when um, data sets are connected by an identifier. So um, I like to think of like, you may have a, a join or a relationship between the data set, I can use references and dereferences to move back and forth between those two data models, whether it's a parent-child relationship, I can kind of go in, in both ways inside of AppSheet. And that's again, very powerful for just kind of denormalizing your data set, data structure, so I can easily get at values when I'm building a, a UX display uh, without writing a lot more expressions. Uh, and references and dereferences really, in the end, simplify that data model for you. I think we're, we're gonna move now to actually show you some of this stuff. So uh, I think the next slide, we can go to the next slide now. Yep, before we do that, um, I think we're just gonna address a few questions that have been asked um, so far, and then we'll dive into the demonstration because I think that'll answer some of the questions that are coming through as well. Great. Um, so we're getting a few about future um, features or capabilities. So the first one being, are there any plans to add slices to Data Explorer? Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, offhand, I'm not the one that would know that. Uh, I definitely get the value in that. Rich, I don't know if you've got a, a better answer than I. Yeah, uh, we currently don't have anything <clears throat> planned on that order, but we'll, we'll take that as, as feedback uh, for the, the engineering team. Great. Um, the next one is, does the dereference work only with key columns? So the more... <clears throat> More, more specifically, the dereference will work with any ref columns you have. So any any columns that you've defined as a reference type column that refers to um, another table, that is where you can use a dereference. So you basically, the first entry, and Derek's probably going to show this, the first entry is the, the reference piece, and then the, the second part of it is whatever column is in that target table that you want to retrieve. Awesome. Okay. We'll just do a couple more, a um, few more future questions. So we might need to um, pivot these, but any plan to provide as you type dynamic expression guidance, all la Google Sheets formulas? So <clears throat> I can chime in. That has been discussed. So code completion is a pretty common uh, thing here. Um, we have basically a lot of work in process now to kind of like, uh, do a lot of like UX types of updates. And so I would say just stay tuned, but uh, I would say that kind of feedback is super helpful. Awesome. And we'll take just one more for right now and then we'll dive into the demonstration. How can I make a filter that can recognize in a delivery order that an item is missing from it? And as a result, the order is not completed. There's a lot of different ways we could address that. Uh, the first question I would ask in, in return is, um, you know, was there a specific number of records that you needed to have? In which case you could create a, a filter statement to see how many records are there. If you expected four, but you only have three, well, you no one's missing. Uh, but the first thing is to think about like, what's the logic we're trying to um, use to define whether an item is missing? And then we create a filter statement to, um, you know, be assessed against that logic. Um, based on the results of that filter statement, then you can create a status, which would be like, you know, incomplete or whatever. Um, I can show you a little bit more about that. We're going to get into some select statements, and I'll show you how we could, you know, for example, maybe add a count uh, uh, formula in front of a select statement to do something like I described. Sounds good. I think with that, we'll dive into the demonstration. So I'll hand it over to Let's go. You. Yeah, could yeah. you go one more slide ahead actually in the deck and then uh, I'll introduce the demo and then I'll jump into the app. Yep. I think it's two more slides ahead actually. There you go. Cool. Hi everybody, uh, I'm Derek. I'm a AppSheet customer engineer, uh, part of the workspace team now. and. I'm going to walk you through some examples of uh, what Sandy showed us uh, in the slides. And I'm going to be using an app that I created to manage opportunity approval process. Uh, we're going to be mostly focused on the formula, but it's nice to know context. So I have a, just a quick uh, uh, slide here to show you what this app does. Uh, in the app, it allows the user to create an opportunity. Uh, when, the, when the opportunity is created, that triggers an app sheet automation, which will generate three dependent tasks. So we're doing a parent-child relationship there. Those three tasks are shown in the slide here as the entitlement study, business qualification, and business case. Then it will ask that user to complete those tasks. And after they're complete, allow that user to submit the opportunity for approval. Uh, when the user submits it, a, uh, the designated approver will get an email. If they reject the record, then an email will go back to the requester. If they approve it, it'll go to the next stage, which is to create a project. And there's another automation to do that. Um, and then the, the last few steps are there to add content to, to the project. And then it, that, that completes the, uh, the process for this app. So uh, it's a pretty basic workflow approval uh, process. The, Focus for this uh, conversation is going to be all the formulas that we use to create this type of behavior inside of AppSheet. Uh, so I have a list of some of the formulas I'm going to be focusing on: uh, unique ID, user email. Uh, you can see the list over in the left-hand side. Uh, 
we can go ahead, uh, Lauren, let's jump over to the other screen and I'll show you how all this is made in AppSheet. Thank you. Uh, so I'm gonna start actually with a quick demonstration. So you'll see the app in action, then I'll, I'll show you the formulas. Uh, what, I, what we're at right now, this is called an onboarding view inside of AppSheet. And it just allows you to show some information to your users so they know how to use that app. So I'll click through these initial screens. We're gonna complete some tasks. Like I said, uh, review the opportunity, and then it's gonna create a project. Uh, this is a deck view inside of AppSheet. And uh, the in the bottom right, there's this plus button. So for my requester, uh, we'll add a, We'll add a record here and I'm gonna select an approver and I'll select my demo account here and I'll save that in. And we'll see our, our office hours example just showed up here and AppSheet's syncing a change back to the database. Uh, we can see that by the number one there uh, waiting to, to move back. Uh, when that sync completes, then AppSheet will trigger an automation which will uh, create three related tasks uh, for that record. These are the entitlement study, business qualification, business case. Uh, I'll quick into each of those. I've, uh, the user could add additional information here. This is just kind of a really simple version. We've customized this to, to really um, uh, mature it for a, a full use case. But uh, for the demo here, I'll let my end user click the complete button, go on to the next task, complete it, uh, go to the final task, complete that, go back to that parent record. And now we can see uh, for our opportunity, our three related tasks are complete. And now I have some logic that allowed this send for review button to appear. So go ahead and click that. That triggered an automation. AppSheet sending an email to my approver. Uh, the approver can uh, update the status either directly in the email or come into the app. Uh, if they do so in the app, they would uh, have these two buttons available. They can approve the project. And if we go back to that opportunities view, we'll see now our office hours example has moved into the approved status. And if we check out the projects uh, list, uh, once the automation finishes, then yep, there it is. Uh, we'll see that new project was created. And finally, I just have an admin view uh, here to show a roll up of, of all of the uh, different uh, pro uh, opportunities, uh, their details, and, and just a, a roll up status. So. A nice little workflow approval app. Let's go check out the formulas. So now I'm in the AppSheet editor. And uh, for anybody who's not uh, familiar, we have the left-hand navigation bar over here on the left. Uh, we have the emulator on the right, where you'll see a live preview of your app. And in the middle, we have the app editor. So this is where you as an app creator can come in and make choices about how you want your app to appear and behave. Uh, I'm in the data tab, looking at the columns view for, uh, let's go up to this opportunities table here. Uh, inside the data set, uh, I have this connected to a spreadsheet. Uh, you could connect it to a SQL database. You could connect it to BigQuery. Sheets are a great way to get started though. And uh, this opportunities table in my spreadsheet, it's got these columns, ID, organization, et cetera. And you can see those columns, those are reflected here in the app editor uh, in, in the data columns uh, uh, page. So let's take this ID example. Uh, in the ID column, I can scroll to the right and you'll see uh, there's some fields to uh, require to, to indicate if this column will be shown, if it's editable, if it's required. Uh, as Sandy mentioned, anytime you see a flask here, you can click on that flask and you can add a formula if you'd like. Uh, if you don't need the formula, you can uh, click the X to remove it. Uh, I'm gonna start with unique ID. Uh, in the initial value field, I have this uh, unique ID formula. So I just clicked on that field and it opened up my expression assistant. And you can see here's, here's the formula, it's a very simple one. Uh, this is a uh, unique ID is something that uh, it's a formula that AppSheet provides and that will automatically create an eight character alphanumeric sequence. So let's come back over to the spreadsheet. This ID column, those are all examples of a unique ID and AppSheet made that for me automatically. The really helpful thing there is um, we want to have a unique, uh, uh, in, uh, unique key for each 
record. Uh, we can we could have you know twenty different uh, records that are are all for generic company, but uh, AppSheet needs to be able to see each of those as unique, even even if the the human user is is seeing the same name. So uh, that in AppSheet is re reflected as the key value and the label value. Key is for the machine, labels for the human. So in this case, we're going to, the machine is going to differentiate these records as ID values. The humans are going to see them as organization values. And so inside of the app, you can see that here. Uh, uh, we're presenting all of our, our organization values here. So um, unique ID is a, is a great way to automatically get that eight character alphanumeric sequence. Uh, the next uh, formula I'll show is user email. Uh, so a lot of times we want to associate a record with the logged in user. Uh, so in my opportunities table, I have this created by column. And let's scroll back over to initial value. And I'll just show you uh, quickly if you don't, if scrolling is, uh, you know, difficult on your desktop setup, you can also click the edit pencil to the left. And it'll open up all the settings for that column. And then you can scroll down and, uh, you'll see the initial value here as well. So two different ways to get to the same value. User email will just return the email of the logged in user. Uh, so this is really nice. Uh, inside of uh, the data set, you'll see here's the uh, created by column and you can see all those email addresses uh, have been populated there by, by AppSheet. Uh, next, I'll show, show an example of time. Uh, so, Let's, uh, we, we've captured the email of the logged in user. Let's capture when this record is getting created as well. Uh, so we can see, I, I added this column for created on and I gave it uh, a type date time. And let's go click uh, the edit pencil this time and we'll come down to the initial value and we'll see this formula now. So let's click on that. And let's just take a, a quick pause here and explore this expression assistant a little bit more. Uh, so the last two, uh, unique ID, user email, um, those are pretty simple. Uh, there, there aren't a whole lot of other options like them. Uh, now, the, the now function is, there's a few other ways that you could do this. Uh, so inside of the expression assistant, you'll see in the uh, tabs here, the, uh, there's some quick help that's organized by by type and so we have a whole list of uh, formulas related to time and if i scroll down this uh, we can see uh, in the example here we'll see this uh, um, we'll see the now formula and it tells us it's going to return a date time we also see an example for today an example for time now uh, Let's take a look. Like maybe I'm not exactly sure what what is the difference. Like what is what is this uh, going to do? Well, AppSheet gives us the test button right here. So let's go ahead and click that, and AppSheet will evaluate that formula. So we can see date time is going to give us, uh, or ex excuse me, the now formula is going to create a date time which includes both well the date and the time. Uh, I can come back here and change that to today, and the expression assistant just uh, evaluated my my formula, and that, that that's a great example too. If, if you have something wrong, AppSheet will will catch it and it'll let you know. Uh, so I was missing the parentheses there, so I added those in, and and now it evaluates okay. We can test that different formula, and now we'll see that we're just getting the date. And similarly, if we did uh, time now, it would just return the time. Uh, so that's a really nice uh, way to quickly see the results of the formula that you're putting into the expression assistant. Uh, if you need additional help, you can always click the help me with expressions button down at the bottom here, and that'll open you up uh, to, to the documentation. And I could, uh, let's do now. And here you can see it just pulled up a whole list of all the help docs. I can click into that uh, one for now, and it'll show you a more in-depth uh, description of how to use it and some of the other similar examples. Uh, so those are uh, time expressions. 
Uh, one last thing I want to show you is concatenate uh, before we get into some of the more complex uh, formulas. So concatenate is something that uh, AppSheet will often create for you. Sorry, let me go back to the app editor and I'm gonna uh, move from my opportunities table uh, down to my users table. Uh, so uh, I'll click on the users table to expand it. And we'll see here, I have a column to collect the first name of and the last name of my user. When I added this table to AppSheet, AppSheet automatically created a virtual column for me called computed name. And let me zoom in here. You'll see this is kind of a subtle difference for uh, for people who haven't been in the platform a lot. You'll see there's these black pencils and these blue pencils. The black pencils correspond to uh, columns that are in the spreadsheet. So we'll see admin, for example. Uh, that's the on my users tab here. That's the last column. Uh, the remainder of these columns have blue pencils, and those are all virtual columns. So actually, is calculating the value of those columns based on what I have in the formula field over here. For the computed name example, AppSheet made that for me automat automatically because it saw that first name and last name column and uh, used the concatenate function to bring those together. Um, what concatenate is doing, uh, and we can see an example of it right down here, uh, is uh, it is accepting a list of components and it's going to bring those together as a string so the first component is first name and first name corresponds to a column inside of my users table the second component is uh just a space which i've uh, indicated by the two parentheses with the space here and then the third component is last name which is another column inside of my uh inside of my spreadsheet uh, now, you can see we're, we're combining information from the data source with some text. Uh, so this is a great place to call out the data explorer. Uh, sometimes you might want to, while you're in this expression assist assistant, see what type of uh, fields are available in your data source. Uh, and that's what data explorer is for. If I click on that, we can see here a list of all of the tables that are connected to this app. And in the users table, we can see here's that uh, first name and that last name column. And uh, we've already got it in here, but I'll just, for the example, let's uh, delete that last name column. And then I could come down here and just click that insert value and, and actually it'll put it right in there for me. So that's a great way to find the columns that you might want to use inside of some of these formulas. Uh, one other thing I'll mention here is uh, you can also use the ampersign. Uh, so if you, uh, an equivalent way instead of using uh, concatenate would be to do first name, ampersign, the uh, next piece of text that you want to include, and then an ampersign, and then I'll just remove that last uh, parenthesis there, and it would do the exact same thing as concatenate. So two different ways to, to get to the same result there. So I'm going to take a quick pause and uh, turn it over to Rich, who's going to walk us through some um, an overview of some of the more uh, advanced formulas in AppG, uh covering select, filter, and reference. So take it away, Rich. Oh, thanks, Derek. All right. so. We're gonna talk about the select statement because this is by far one of the most frequently searched for and asked about um, formulas in AppSheet. So we went and put together uh, a couple slides to help describe what select does. Um, one key point to this as well is this is just for formulas, right? You're not having, typically when you talk about you know, a select statement, um, in the database world, it involves, you know, retrieving, you know, records from a database. This is not used to basically add your data sources or create slices or anything like that. So I just wanted to differentiate, um, you know, what is typically thought of with select with, with how AppSheet, um, you know, thinks about it. In the AppSheet world, select is simply a formula to retrieve a list of values from another table that you know can be used 
for other, other formula and expressions. So select data at the syntax level um, is constructed as shown here. So I've also color coded these slides as well. So all the different colors are meant to show the relationships, what is what. So all the greens are related to you know, the table um, values, the reds are the column values and how they map to the, the table themselves and the results that come out of the expression. But select in itself has three different pieces. Um, the first one is the identification of what column you're going to use, right? And to identify a column, that includes specifying the table and then the column next to the table as, sh as shown right here, right? And then the second piece is some filter condition that will then take those list of all the all the column values there and then filter them down uh, based off of whatever expression you use. And then lastly, there's an option to only retrieve distinct or unique items. So if you have duplicates uh, in that list, that is result. You can put in a true here uh, for that third item, um, and then that will make a unique um, uh, a unique list, making sure that each item is unique. The third, this third distinct option is optional, right? So if you don't, if you know, typically when you have select, you'll probably just use the first two, and uh, you can leave off the third, and it'll just default to false. Uh, but just know that 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 is there as an option. So let's take this to a practical example here. Um, and show you how this would work using this, this um, you know, the slide here that shows a movies table, right? So let's say I have a, um, a table with movies, right? And there's a title and there's a year and there's a rating associated with each movie. And I wanna create a formula here that, you know, gets a list of movie titles with the rating above 9.0, okay? So very simple. And what we're going to do is first identify the fact that we want to get a list of movie titles, right? So the result is going to be the movie, movie titles. So we know the first part of the select statement, we're going to target the title column. So we have movies and title. As you can see there on the, on the right side, there's a, a, a formula that I put in place that says select movies title uh, comma rating is greater than 9.0, right? So that first part, I'm targeting that that title column as the list of values I want to retrieve. And then for the second part, I'm specifying that I want to ensure all ratings are above or greater than 9.0. And you could see how those ratings map, right? And we're basically identifying those first two movies, The Shawshank Redemption and Godfather, as uh, the two um, the two titles that match that result. So therefore, the result is going to be those two titles that I just talked about. Okay, so that's that's basically how select works. And once you understand um, what AppSheet's doing, there's you know a lot of different you know ways you can target any other table in AppSheet to retrieve data for whatever particular formula use case you're looking to solve for. So that's with one filter condition. So the next common question is going to be like, what if I have multiple, you know, conditions that I need to have? Um, to do that, you're going to use the AND um, function, which is a, you know, a, is a Boolean operator, right? So there's AND and there's OR and there's NOT. And those are your, your three formulas that you can actually use inside of um a select formula to allow to have multiple filter conditions as well. So as you can see here, the, um, um, the, um, the, the formula that I added now has that second condition there. And I'm, I'm realizing that I didn't update the, um, or I did, no, I didn't update the result there. So that should just be Shawshank Redemption. I apologize for the confusion there, but this is a would be an example of how you can add multiple filter conditions in the uh, select statement um, if you needed to. Okay, so we can move on. So this this kind of carries over to other functions that AppSheet uses that you may see, right? 
you, uh, you may have seen, you know, there's a lookup function, there's ref rows, there's filter functions, uh, formulas inside of the app sheet. All these formulas use the select in the background to run. So that's why we wanted to focus on select in general and showing how that works. But this slide here, and, and this will be available for everyone after the, the stream, I just wanted to provide this as a reference for everyone to see how these formulas are very simple and they're essentially doing very similar things, but they're just easier to use in some situations and, and will you know can lead to more simpler formulas without having to go into a full select statement. But just know performance wise, regardless of what you know type of formula you use here, um, it's all still using select in the background. So you don't see any performance differences regardless of the formula that's being chosen. So with that, I will um, I'll turn it back over and uh, we can uh, continue. Oh. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, thank you, Rich. I'll show you a few examples of how these are used inside of AppSheet. And uh, personally, I find uh, formulas to be pretty fun to write kind of feels like a Sudoku puzzle to me. It's a little bit of logic, but but pretty accessible and kind of fun to think about how to state these uh, conditions in order to get the results that you want. So I'll show you a few examples. Um, let's start with filter. I have inside of uh, my data columns, I'm looking back at my opportunities table here. And when I showed you the example, I clicked the plus button and it uh, opened a form in the approver field. It gave me a list of approvers. Uh, so what I wanted to do in this is, uh, let's come over to my users tab. I have a column called approver. That's a yes, no type. So it's either true or false. And I only wanted to show records from this users table where this column is true. So I did that using a filter statement. And inside of the app on the approver column, it, uh, I'll click the edit pencil to bring up the details. First of all, it's a reference. So it's looking at my users table. And I added this uh, valid if uh, function. So uh, the valid, let me, let me go back for one second. Um, valid if can be used in two different ways inside of AppSheet. Uh, the first way is to, well, validate content. So, um, you know, if, if you, you, you could, you could, do that in whatever way you want. Let's say you want to make sure a number is greater than a certain minimum threshold. You could you could invalidate anything below that threshold. Uh, or you can ensure that records are uh, contained from a list that you specify. And whenever you specify a list inside valid if, it'll give you the behavior I just showed, where it'll it'll give you that list as an optional dropdown. Uh, so in my valid if uh, formula, I'm using a filter statement. And filter is doing exactly what we just saw in, in Rich's slides. It's going to go look at the users table and it's going to return all the records from that table where this uh, condition is uh, is true. And so I'm looking at that approver column and, and uh, checking for values that are true. Uh, a little pro tip, you can actually make this a little bit shorter uh, since approver is itself a true false uh, column. And we're looking uh, for these conditions on the right to be evaluated as true false, you can actually delete that value equals true uh, when, when you're working with yes, no columns. Um, so anyway, you, you don't have to, it's just a little pro tip if you ever wanna shorten some of your formulas. Next, I'm gonna show you an example of ref rows. Uh, so that exists if we go look again at, uh, the data opportunities here, and we come down to our related tasks uh, inside of AppSheet. If I click on one of these opportunities, we'll see our list of related tasks here. Uh, when I created my tasks table, come back over to my spreadsheet, I'll come to my tasks table. You'll see I have an ID for the task itself. I have a, a human readable title for that task. Then I have this opportunity column. This you can see the key here. This eight five six eight. 
that is pointing back to the key column of my opportunity table. And inside of app sheet, if we go and look at the tasks table, we'll see here's all of our columns, the ID, that this is the, uh, the task, and then that opportunity, uh, this is type reference. So inside of app sheet, when I give a column type reference and I point it back at another table, what app sheet's gonna do is automatically grab the ID value from that parent table and put it into the child table for that reference column. The other thing AppSheet's gonna do is it's, it'll make a ref rows uh, virtual column. And so uh, each child looks at a single parent and each parent has several children. And all of those children are gathered by this formula here. So we can see related tasks and I'll click on that and it's uh, using ref rows. And this is just saying, grab all of the records from the tasks table where the value in the opportunity column matches the ID value for this record. And so that's making that one-to-many relationship inside of AppSheet. And then uh, it's displaying those uh, records that were returned as the related tasks list here. Uh, so those are both really common. You'll see those a lot. Um, I'm going to try to show you a couple others and then leave the last 15 minutes for questions. Uh, starting with a select statement. Uh, so inside of AppSheet, let's just take an example where we have, uh, inside of our opportunities here, we have a few records that are pending review. Uh, let's say when somebody adds a new record, we only want to allow them to select an approver if uh, that approver isn't currently engaged with another record. So. Uh, only approvers where they aren't currently assigned to a pending opportunity. Uh, we can do that using uh, 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 some list operations in a select statement. So uh, let's come to the opportunities table, and here's my approver. And so we're 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 trying to control uh, what, um, sorry, we're trying to control what information is available in this dropdown. So that sounds like a valid if statement. So we'll come to our, our approver column. We'll come look at this valid if. And so right now we're gonna we're, we're returning all of the approvers, but we want to only return some of the approvers. So what what are the approvers we want to remove from that list? Well, uh, we'd want to make another list of all the approvers that are associated with opportunities that have status equal pending review. So how do we do that? Well, let's try a select statement. So I will, let's do a select statement. And I'm going to select records from the opportunities uh, table. And I'm gonna pull the value from the approver column. And let me just get my spelling right here. And I'm gonna only pull values from that table uh, where status equals pending review. Okay, and that sheet gave me the green check, so it likes it. So let's go ahead and save that and let's see what happens first. Um, in fact, we, before we even do that, let's just use the test. We don't even have to go into that. We can click the test. And here, sure enough, it showed me these two results. Um, these are both, uh, uh, these are both, let's go, let's go back to the app. We'll save that. And let's look at our, our pending review here. If I click on this one, we'll see it's currently being, it's currently assigned to this Derek Altostrap. And so it looks like this is good. We've, we've identified the approvers who are assigned to records, but those are the ones we don't want to show, not the ones we do want to show. So how do we, how do we switch that around? Well, you can add and subtract from lists. So the original, um, the original list that we had was a list of all of the users who had, uh, who were marked as approvers in the, in the users table. So let's start with that list. 
and let's subtract the ones that we just uh, um, that we just uh, identified through that select statement. I'll click the test button again. And sure enough, now I've got my approver at Altostrat, my manager at Altostrat. So those two uh, uh, records that were associated with a pending review record, they've been removed. Uh, so addition and subtraction works for lists. That's the uh, main takeaway there. And uh, the one last uh, list function I'll show is for lookups. Uh, let's say we wanted to uh, control who can see the opportunity dashboard and only show it to admins. Uh, so inside of my opportunity, inside of my uh, data source on the users tab, I have a column called admin. Uh, I only want to show it to people who have value true here. Uh, well, let's go do that with a lookup statement. Uh, so I'll come back to my app and I'll go to my UX and I'll look at my op dashboard here. And I'm going to come down to the show if field and let's use this lookup statement here. And what this is saying is take the email of the logged in user, go to the users table, match that value uh, to a uh, to a value in the email column and then return the value in the admin column for that same row. So right now I'm logged in at my Derico at Altostrat email address. So it'll come down this, it'll it'll take my Derico at Altostrat, that's returned by the user email, uh, open up the users table, scroll down the email column until it matches, and then come over and return the value from the admin column. And uh, that can be a really handy way to return a single value from an expression. And if you go back and look at Rich's slide after the after the presentation, you'll see some equivalent formulas there. Lookup is just a really nice shorthand uh, when you want to. It's essentially a V lookup from a spreadsheet. Uh, so I'm going to pause there. Uh, I want to save some time for questions. Uh, let uh, Lauren, would you want to walk us through those? Yep, sounds great. Thank you so much. And yeah, we'll take the remaining time for your questions. So let's see how many we can get through. And for those that we don't, we'll be sure to follow up in the community with those and in the recap post. So our first question, there's actually two related to time zones and date and time. So one person asked, can you speak about time zones with date and time? And then a follow-up was, I'd like to know whether time zones will automatically be updated according to the app user's location, or if there are any actions needed to specify the time zone setting. Yeah, so there's a, there's a couple couple functions. So if, you, if you're gonna have an app that spans multiple time zones, instead of using now, as uh, the now function, as, as Derek shown, there's this formula called UTC now. So that's, you know, UTC time. So that's a way to record uh, time, regardless of where people's time zones are. And then there's also a formula called UTC off, uh, UTZ uh, zone offset or something like that, um, where you can then detect what region the users are in, and then use that to calculate the local time. Awesome. Okay. Hi, how to save a record automatically when scanning a QR? Hmm. Yeah, so could you share my screen, Lauren? Yep. Uh, inside of a form view, you can, uh, let me let me pull up one of these. Uh, so. I don't have a scan going in here, but I can show you the settings that are related to it. Uh, let's just go to the uh, opportunities form here. Uh, inside of the settings here, you have an auto save option. Uh, so <clears throat> when uh, that'll just automatically save the form after the last field is filled in. So you just wanna uh, create a form that has one field to collect uh, the QR, QR code, or you could have multiple fields if you want you just want the uh, QR code to be the last one, so then it'll trigger that auto save. Awesome, thank you. Okay, if you develop in the AppSheet environment, will AppSheet create the new Google Sheet or do you need to create the sheet first? Uh, yeah, uh, you'll need to create the sheet first. Uh, so the create the sheet 
And then inside of AppSheet, you go to data tables, and then you can add uh, that, uh, you can add that sheet to your app. And then if you want to change the column structure, you would change the column structure in your sheet, come back to app sheet, and then go to data columns and hit the regenerate table button. And it'll pull those changes from your sheet. Also, also just to add, um, you can create an app sheet app from sheets, Google sheets mm -hmm. as well. So in that sense, you can just pop down the extensions menu, I think, and then create an app. There's an app sheet uh, option there. Um, then also just kind of looking forward, uh, the idea of being able to start in app sheet and have it generate a backend data source, backend essentially database. These are discussions underway. So we get lots of feedback for those kinds of uh, uh, use cases as well. <clears throat> Great. Can you please address the benefits of dot notation where it can or can't be used? I see it in some people's examples in the community, but I don't find documentation about it. Dot notation is a dereference. Uh, so I like to think of a dereference as as a like a, a, a sky bridge between two buildings, the buildings being the table and the sky bridge being the reference column between them. Uh, so uh, the place that's typically used is if you're in uh, a child uh, child record. So the example I showed, we had opportunities, that was the parent, and we had tasks, those were the children. So let's say while we're doing something with the task, we want to know like the opportunity, you know, who created the opportunity. We could access that by doing an opportunity dot created by. So opportunity is the name of the reference column. Dot is telling you go over to that parent table. And then the next piece is the column from that parent table to return. Uh, so it's just a super handy shorthand way of pulling in uh, information from a parent table when you're doing stuff with a child uh, table. Also, just to add on to that, um, if you have like multiple relationships, like master detail detail, um, you can have that dot reference added on to that uh, as well. So so you can add uh, add on more dot re references as needed. Mm -hmm. Great. Can you use the data explorer to write the select statement? Won't exactly write it for you. Uh, but you can use it to help find the columns that you'll use in the conditional statement of your select statement. So I showed a quick example of that where, uh, you know, as I was writing the condition statement, I needed to find what the name of a table was. Use the Data Explorer for that. You could go into your spreadsheet too. You know, you, 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 there's, there's different ways that you can find it. The Data Explorer is just intended to give you really easy insight into what all of the data, uh, what all the column names are. Um, you know, I, just to add like a more personal anecdote to that response, I'll sometimes like, I often have a user's table in my apps. Uh, I usually have an email column in the user's table. Sometimes I call it email. Sometimes I call it user email. Sometimes I call it customer email. You know, I, I create it differently based on how I feel that day. And then I'm writing this expression and I'm like, oh, shoot, you know, what did I call that? That's the data explorer. You can just go see what the name of that column was and bring it in real quick. Makes sense. Another future looking question, but any plans to allow expressions to be reused in multiple places, like an externally defined expression to be used in multiple show if formulas? I'm not aware of any roadmap for that. Uh, it'd just be copy paste. So the, this topic has come up also in internal discussions, the notion of having kind of snippets of code of expressions and things like that. Uh, all I can say is that it has been discussed and, and I'm definitely in favor of that. So we'll see, we'll see how, how things work out. Sounds good. Okay. How can we make a product being scanned individually? For example, if I have a product in an order which needs to be scanned five times, how can I scan it one piece at a time? That's, I, I guess I'm, I'm not sure I totally understand it, but what I, my, my, my guess is that you have maybe five different barcodes that you need to bring in. Um, in which case you would just have a different field for each of those barcodes. And so when, you know, let's say it's barcode one, barcode two, barcode three, et cetera, when you 
are in your form, you'll be prompted to scan barcode one. If you do so, and it'll enter the value into there. And then you have a field to prompt you to scan for barcode two. So you'll do so and it'll bring the value in. So you could you could do it that way. Um, or, you know, if, if you, I don't know, I'm thinking of, of how else to interpret that. I, I, I think that if, if that's what you mean, I, I hope that's a helpful answer. Yeah, and, and just for this person, if you, um... We, you know, love for you to address this in the community too, with um, additional details, and and uh, the team and the community can help respond uh, with a little bit more information. Um, okay, just a few more here before we wrap up. Um, how do you handle loops where you may need to update a limited multiple of child records based on a criteria? You can. Uh, would you mind sharing my screen? Or? Yep. Uh, so inside of AppSheet, there is an action that uh, might help you with that. I'll go ahead and click new action. And under the do this, there's an action called uh, execute an action on a set of rows. Uh, so if I click into that, uh, it'll first it shows me the reference table. That means the table this is going to be activated by. Uh, so right now I'm on my opportunities table. So uh, if, I, if I keep it there, we'll see the, the button stays there. And then this is all the rows that I want to act on. So, uh, and then this is a reference action. So this is the thing I want to do to those all those rows. So let's say it's like, you know, change status to complete. Uh, then I could use a select statement or a filter statement here uh, to specify all those rows where where I want that action to be triggered. Uh, so that that might be a good way to do it. There isn't a way to do like for loops because there, there's no code, uh, but generally the intent of a uh, for loop can be accomplished uh, through actions like this. Great. Okay. Um, looks like one question here is there, are there any plans on the ability to create views in the SQL sense, which join multiple tables, being able to create a UX view on a multi table join would be great. I'm not aware of roadmap for that. That would be pretty sweet. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, I mean, you can kind of use, this isn't exactly what you're asked for at all, um, but you could use a virtual column to you know, pull in some piece of information from another call from another table, um, but to, not 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 exactly the same thing. Um, yeah, to just take like two tables and combine them together into a single table that, that's not a thing that actually supports today. However, I would say that if you are using a SQL database, you can create views and you can connect AppSheet to those views. So, though AppSheet won't manage the join for you, if you do the join externally to AppSheet, then you can connect to it. Got it. And yeah, just as a reference too for all of these great ideas, um, we encourage you to check out that link that I just shared in the chat for feature ideas on the community where you can add those in and search for others and vote on them. So it'd be really helpful um, for us to know what you care about and what you'd like to see on the roadmap as well. Okay, I think we'll have time for just one more question, but uh, if your sheet has a column that holds dates showing when a user stopped using your product and you need to filter these users out based on a user selected month and year, how would you go about setting that up? Filter those out based on user selected month and year. Okay, um, yeah, uh, filter statement. So th those are all conditions that go into the filter statement. Um, so you would be, uh, you have you have a, a table, and that, and then you have a column inside of, and you want to return records from that table where the date column matches some criteria. Uh, so you could uh, say that the, you know, the date. Um, must be greater than some some value that you specify there. So, uh, the short answer is a select statement, and um, you know I think you know to kind of echo what Lauren said, like take a crack at it, and then if you aren't getting exactly what you want, the community is a great place to post the the um, you know a little bit more details about exactly you know your data setup, the formula you used, and a lot of times somebody on the community can help uh, you get that last little piece, and it'll it'll get you exactly what you're looking for. 
Awesome. Well, just with the few moments we have left, uh, I just want to say thank you all for your presentation, your demonstrations, and for um, answering these questions. Uh, as we said, we will follow up with you in the community on some of those that we weren't able to get to. Um, and please feel free to add those into the Q&A forum as well. Um, just as a final note, um, here are some resources for you. Um, you can also find these links in the YouTube description, but that first is just for the community where you can ask your questions, stay up to date with upcoming office hours and events. Um, there's a new AppSheet Help Center um, with documentation and help articles that you can check out with that second link. And then lastly, we'd love to hear your feedback on this session, previous sessions that you may have attended, and any ideas or suggestions you have for future topics, we'd really love to hear from you so that we can cater our content appropriately. Um, and with that, I just wanted to open it up for you all if you had any final thoughts before we closed out. Happy app building. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you so much again. And uh, keep an eye out in the community for our next office hours. And we'll be in touch with the recap and the recording. Right. And thanks, Lauren, as well. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Right. See you next time. Great. Bye.